What's up, Buddhas? Today we are going to be asking and hopefully answering the question of how do you get along with everyone? Now, Buddhas, I've got to let you know that I've got a playlist down below in the description with well over 100 Buddha billionaire videos that you can binge watch to accelerate your spiritual awakening. Now, how do we constantly get along with people? And not only get along with people, but get along with people in a way that we end up ultimately getting what we want. And it's as easy as yes. Let me explain. If you are in a conversation with someone, let's say you're talking to an employer or a boss, and they say, hey, person whose job it is to answer emails all day, can you go outside and change the tires on my car. You might look at them a little quizzically and just say, no, that's, that's not my job. What you've done by doing that is created a disagreement. Now your boss is going to say, well, no, I'm, I'm your boss. I told you, go out and do that or you're fired. Oh, shit. Okay, I'm going to go do that. But if instead you take that opportunity to say, yeah, sure thing, boss. Can you let me know why you chose me for that role? What you're doing there is agreeing with the will of your employer, but you're getting them to clarify. You're asking for an understanding. And yes, you may have a boss where asking to clarify something might be a terrible idea. And then in this case, it doesn't apply. But most people are usually willing to explain some very basic reasoning behind the question that they're asking you to do stuff. And if they're not, then again, you've, you've got other things to figure out. So what? Can you explain to me, but what, uh, boss, why you think I am the right choice to go out and replace the tires on your car? Well, this is agreeing with the task that your boss has asked you to do, but you're asking for some clarification to understand why it is that you've been chosen to do it. And what this does here is it gives your boss a reason to reflect. It gives your boss uh, an opportunity to really explain the course of action. Instead of just do A, it's do A for these reasons. And the two of you can then create a discord where you are communicating and talking about why and how you want to do it. And maybe you are the, the best option in the, in the team and it's a private company anyways. So you do what the boss asks you to do. And that's just how it ends up being at the end of the day. This example is very particular, but it can also be applied to absolutely every interaction that you have with people. When you agree with the thing that they're asking or the statement that they're making, both of those are very important. So if someone says that the earth is flat, if you immediately say, no, it's not, then you have created an argument. But if you say to someone who says, hey, the earth is flat, and you say, well, that's a fascinating point. Can you explain what you mean by that? You're not disagreeing with them, but you're also not just subserviently agreeing with their point of view and, and just ending the conversation there. No, like, do tell me, why do you believe that? I, personally, and this is an actual thing that's going on in my head right now, I have not had the opportunity to circumnavigate the globe, personally, in this lifetime. It is a goal of mine to travel all the way around the planet and come back to where I started. Because I think that would be A, incredible experience, and B, the only real rate, the only real way that I, at a human scale, can understand the whole idea of a ball, of the planet. Because objectively speaking, and I don't want to turn this into a flat earth conspiracy video, but objectively speaking, how can you know either way? Right? We sit on a planet but how do we know? We get images from space, but how do we know? We can have planes fly around and people talk about it, but how do you know? So it's really, really quite eye-opening if you can have the humility. And I'm using this flat earth example because it's fun, not because I think that it matters at the end of the day. But if you can have the humility to talk to someone that believes something that's contrary to your beliefs and say, hey, you know what? Tell me about that. Why is it that you believe that? Lay out an actual understanding there 
and then you playing off those energies. It also works if you think about it from a perspective of momentum. So if I'm heading in a direction and I'm telling people this is the direction that I'm going and that's where I'm at. If I then come up against someone who just completely and utterly says, no, nope, that's not possible, then we're going to create a collision. We've just created an argument and now we've got to deal with the aftermath. You get two cars heading in the opposite directions, it's going to be much worse than if you had your direction and then you come up against someone and they say, yeah, tell me more about that. I, I, don't, I haven't heard that before or I don't know if I agree about that, but I'm really interested in learning your perspective on it. When you start to align, even if slightly, and this is a good way to start it at first, slightly align with what the other person is saying, then you're allowing them to use their energy to pull you down that path of understanding or of learning about that subject. But if you immediately argue and say, no, screw that, I'm, I'm out of here, well, you're creating that collision. So in recap here, Buddhas, what we're doing in essence to get along with everyone and always get our way, essentially, is we're avoiding argument because argument is unproductive. And there's a humongous difference between arguing about something and having an intellectual discussion about it. Not agreeing with someone does not necessarily mean it has to be an argument. Tell me more about your flat earth theory. Tell me more about why I should change the tires on your car. Instead of, no, you're wrong. See how those have two totally different energies? I'm enabling the person who's made that request or made that statement to truly explain their point of view, to completely and utterly take that floor and yeah, go with it. Why should I do that? Why should I believe that? I'm not giving them my power, but I'm tapping in to their understanding. And worst case Ontario, you learn something, which as far as I'm concerned is the whole freaking point and reason that we're here. So Buddhas, remember, remember the 5th of November, but other than the gunpowder treason and plot, remember to love yourselves because it's the most important thing.